after she does her thing. So the recording has been started. Uh, let me share my screen for before she gets going and show show the slides. Uh, the slides are there in the week three overview. Um, so welcome week three. It's uh, I would give you all a unhappy national opposite day. Um, don't know if you celebrated that with your students or not, but apparently that is the uh, the national day for today. Uh, so first off, many apologies. I've had some some personal issues that I've had to deal with uh, last week and early this week, and then I had a day uh, up and back in Salt Lake, and I've been out sick for the last two days. So my to my the students in my section, I had hoped to be all caught up with the discussions and everything um, for. The class I was able to get through your um, online portfolio submissions, uh, which gave me some good direction on a couple of things to talk about in the seminar today, uh, but also uh, to uh, just see you guys are doing a great job with that. But I will I will get caught up uh, with that as soon as I can. Um, so my apologies for not being as as uh, Engaged and, and interactive with with this course and Brandon Brandon's in the same boat. Um, I can't I don't know how many miles he's done. I've done already this month 3000 miles for work. And so between being out of the office for for all the different things we have been doing with my regular job and and personal things and being sick. I've I've, I've been behind. So my my apologies. Um, first off, any big burning questions, comments or concerns beyond. Uh, the lack of feedback that you've been getting or anything. Uh, unmute your microphone if you if you have anything you want to share before we start the the uh, presentations. Anyone out there? I hear some microphones come on, but I'm here now, Clint. Hey, Brandon, welcome. You're only two minutes late. I started the recording like right on time. So uh, well, that's okay. <laughs> uh, feel free to jump in, jump in anytime you want. So Alrighty. we'll circle we'll circle back around to questions at the end if we haven't covered something that you need to know. Uh, let us know. So today we're going to be going through elements five through eight. Uh, Tammy has requested to go first, identifying critical information. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to give her presenter rights, and we're going to let her go crazy here. Where'd she go? There you are, Tammy, presenter. All right. So now, once, so now, if you're if you're on the Quick Start tab in the Cisco meeting thing, you should see a big share screen button. Okay. There was a big share screen button before, and now I don't see it. Uh oh. Oh, quick. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, go. can we see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, my element was element six, identifying critical information. And um, when introducing new material to students, it's crucial for the teacher to identify what information is most critical to the mastery, to their mastery of the learning goal. We present so much information to students that sometimes they have a hard time picking out what's most important. Um, and the book suggests three strategies for identifying those critical, most important things. Identifying critical input experiences, visual activities, and pause time. Um, the first Hi. one, identifying critical input experiences. And it says to identify segments that are most critical. There should only be two or three of those per learning goal. You don't want to do a lot of them, just a few. And it says it suggested establishing a multi-sensory routine that like alerts students let them know this is critical information, pay really close attention or something. And then to have students rate their level of understanding of critical information. And it gave an example of a guide, and I included that in here, just a four-point scale so that students can give themselves a four, a three, or a two, or a one. And four means that they understand the simple and the complex parts. Three is they kind of understand it too, not so much, maybe just a simple, and one is that they really aren't understanding either of it. The next um, suggestion was the visual activities. 
and it said to stimulate um, students' visual and auditory senses to increase student engagement and understanding, then that, and that's crucial for students. It suggested displaying pictures or video, and you can like, as you're presenting, being kind of partially hide and then present and reveal as you go. And it talked about layering things beneath visual prompts. So that's another thing that you can do so that um, you can get the students to link their past content to the new content. It also suggests that you can use software to provide visual cues to students. Um, an example it gave was using consist consistent patterns of color. You don't have to do that. That was just an example it gave. And then the last suggestion it gave was pause time. And it said to make sure that at key points during an introduction that you're giving adequate pause time and indicating that this is important and giving students time to reflect on that information so that they can, you know, connect new information to something that they already know and gain a further understanding of it. And it said, if you're not really good at giving pause time, that you can even give yourself a countdown tool, like a little 10 second timer or something to count down so that you're giving adequate time. So that was, that was mostly what mine was about, was identifying critical information. Perfect, so, thank you Tammy. Any questions with that? I don't know how to unshare my screen now. Uh, just move your mouse up to the top middle of your screen and a little thing will drop down. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Stop sharing. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? Yay. Okay, no see. questions. <laughs> uh, let's jump to uh, Sonia and Janet then organizing the physical layout of the room. Do you guys just want to talk? Do you have any, do you want to share your screen or anything? No, we just want to talk. <laughs> okay, talk away. Um, ours was on organizing the physical layout of the classroom. So I took learning centers and the other one is involving students in the design process. On the learning centers, they said, oh, to have a part of your room for, um, particular books, materials, or other resources. Think about where you're going to face your students when you are, you know, do they need to face a certain direction in these learning centers? Um, where are you going to put your computers, your printers? What's the best placement for your technology? And putting it in where that doesn't have uh, traffic jams, like if you have Chromebook labs that you can go have students go get the Chromebooks without having a big um, traffic jam kind of thing. It also said that you could take some technology like cameras and watch your classroom and see if you can see the traffic patterns and blah, blah, blah. I looked at my room and I thought I have a small enough room that I'm lucky I can put the computers in a corner and that would be my learning center, I guess. But it would be good if you have the room to be able to set up those kinds of learning centers and remember what your audience is, remember what your object is of setting up your learning center. So those are the, some of the things to think about on learning centers. My part of this was involving students in the design process and they're actually talking about the physical layout of the classroom. Um, they, they want you to involve them in setting it up. And they said things that they want you to include in it was the whole group instruction, a place for that, a place for small group interaction, and individual learning centers um, were things that they wanted you to do. And um, I, I had a son-in-law just moved to Wyoming into a brand new school, and he was telling me how neat the school was. So I asked him to send me um, a picture of it. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this picture, but I feel like his room really has it set up um, in that way. Oh, it, well, you probably can't see, but can you see anything there? <laughs> But anyway, his room has. Yeah, we won't be able to see your camera. Sorry. 
you can you can email me the send me the picture and I'll put it in the slideshow. Okay, okay, we could. You mean like right now? Or when you're done with your presentation? Okay, all right, yeah, I'll do that afterwards. But um, yeah. they just they talked about and they talked about having the kids using different modalities too. Like they said, IWB software, Google Drive, Prezi. Um, and then after they've set it up and, and have them look for ideas online of how to set up the classroom and then have them make a presentation and then vote on it with the eye clickers. And I spent a lot of time last night looking at um, the eye clickers and how to find something that you don't have to spend any money on. Um, when I was looking, there was a reef eye clicker and I thought, I wonder if I could just have my kids use their phones in classroom, in the classroom to do those types of things. Is that, do you know if that, can I ask that? Is that possible to do it without having to pay anything? Because even on the eye reef, it said they wanted them to pay a fee. The other clickers are huge amounts of money. No, it's okay. That always happens. Uh, <laughs> the answer to your question is yes. Uh, like uh, Pull Everywhere will allow kids to use a uh, web-based thing. Um, Nearpod, Socrative, um, or some others, Brandon, that allow you to do some polling. Well, oh, okay. Because I have Socrative. You can actually Quick poll on thing. that. Can you poll on that, Socrative? Yeah, yeah, you do quizzes. Yeah, you do quizzes. Well, I do quizzes, but I'm just wanting polls as to which one they like the best. Yeah, so they have like a quick poll question. You can just oh, okay. Just one and just say A, B, C, D. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to look into that part of it, too. Um, the other thing with mine is my room, I was just looking at the setup of it because I do have a pretty good sized room. Um, and I was thinking, does mine really fit into to what this is talking about? And I'm not sure it does. You have to take what you can, I think, from it. But I have a sewing area, you know, a, a lab area where they're doing the hands-on. I have my area. And I was thinking, is, is it conducive to them uh, planning and putting together presentations? And what I have to do in my room because of my resources, I have to have them turn the tables in towards each other to do their talking back and forth. Um, with middle schoolers, I find that having the tables that way all the time really doesn't work very well, if you know what I mean. So off, most often, they're facing me in, in those situations, and if I need to, then I change it for, for what we're doing at that particular time. Um, but it gave some good ideas on making the kids a part of that setup. So. There you have it. That's great. Um, the more and more when we see new schools, we're seeing a lot of uh, flexible seating uh, abilities, you know, tables on wheels and, you know, things like that where you can kind of customize the arrangements of the room much more easily than what's right. you know, traditional desks and chairs and stuff like that. So excellent. Thank you. Um, number seven, organizing students to interact with new knowledge. Darcy has covered that. She couldn't be here today. She's on mom duty. Uh, the link here and also uh, Tammy's slideshow is linked from the presentation. It's also linked from the week three overview page. Uh, but we'll just let uh, you go and watch Darcy's section on your own time. It's about eight minutes long, so it's a little long to, to share here. It's, but she did a really great job. She used educations on her iPad, a uh, really good model to uh, and let you know how to organize students to interact with new knowledge. So we'll let her, uh, let you guys experience that on your own time. And then Nikki, previewing new content. Do you need to be a presenter or you want to just, uh, how are you just going to? Um, yeah, I have a presentation. Did I unmute uh, uh, Yep, we can hear you. Okay. So let me pass the baton to you. Let me stop my screen. And Nikki. Do I share my screen? Is that what you guys said? Yeah, go ahead. 
we can do that. Okay. Perfect. Okay, does that work? Yeah, we see it. Okay, so my element was element eight, previewing new content. So I kind of tried to um, combine two of the methods that I feel like I would use most in my classroom, which were preview questions and skimming. So I made this Prezi that has the questions for all the different ways that you can use to preview some content in your classroom. So first you could go through and show the students all these different questions. What are preview questions? What is skimming? What is a KWL chart? Um, what is a fact organizer? Um, what is an anticipation guide? And then what is word splash? And have them discuss what they think the answers would be to that question. And then you're kind of skimming the headlines to this section as well. So I think it's kind of a combination. Um, once you get into that, you can go to the different um, parts where um, this one is that you're highlighting information to come and it catches the attention of your students and activates the prior knowledge. You're and using if you click present the blue present button, that'll make it full screen for everybody. Oh, thanks. My, yeah, no, sure. my little thing's in the way. Oh, there we go. Okay, my little camera's in the way. Okay, so it then catches the reader's attention and you use the questions that you can um, to lead your class discussion. And then after you are start to teach concepts, you can refer back to those questions to determine if they answered them. And then these are just the technology tools that they recommended using online survey monkey, um, your polling device or polling technology. And they recommend using clickers or mobile devices, which at an elementary level, we don't really have that. So I would probably use the quiz where you could do the online interactive quiz. And if you go into the settings, you can actually remove the answer. So you can display what everyone answered, but they don't actually know what the right answer is. And then they also um, said to, you could use the primary sources like audio and image videos. So to prompt that. And then, oh wait, I don't know, it's not going. For some reason, it's not going to the next one. Okay, use your space bar in the right arrow. Oh, okay. It had arrows earlier. And then skimming to the next one. So just skim over your headlines and your images and graphs. I think lots of times I use this in class. Um, you're just making inferences of what's coming. You can use the headings to, as a discussion, they can summarize what they think the main idea is going to be and make predictions. And then the technology that they um, recommend for skimming would be to use something like this, like your Prezi um, or Google Drive. I like Google Drive because they can be a little bit more interactive with each other, but Prezi's fun because more than one person could be on the presentation. So those were kind of the technology in that. Um, KWL, I think we'll have to use this. In our ah! Hi, everyone. Thank you. So I think we all use this a lot anyway, where you just have your three columns and they list what they already know, what they want to know and then what they've learned at the end of the lesson. And the technology that they brought up, again, were the clickers, your text input, or polling software. Um, Google Classroom, I think, would be a good resource because you could create an online organizer that can be edited and shared with other students. So I think that's what I would think would be beneficial in my classroom. Um, and then that, I guess, anticipation, um, statements for students to respond to. I, Think this would be fun, especially with something like Kahoot. Um, they recommended again just your clickers. Um, I brought up quizzes because I like that. I think Kahoot would be really nice. They could play the game and get their curiosity going. And then Classroom, Google Classroom, where they could be responding to each other and get thinking about what's to come. Um, advanced organizers are just blank graphic organizers that they fill out as they go, um, then they can really visualize how the information fits together, uh, make connections to what they already know to what they're learning. Uh, technology is a Prezi or your Google Drive. Um, and it suggests to make sure that you lock your different presentations so that you're not they're not seeing the answers before they're making predictions. 
Um, I like the idea of showing videos or presentations that they have to fill in their notes as they're watching it. Keeps them a little bit more engaged, I think. And word splash was kind of fun. I did I made word clouds, but this was fun because you can put in a big group of text and see what comes up. So um, I actually used Google Cloud instead of the Wordle that they um, recommended. But I put in the actual section of word splash, and these were the words that came up. So you could discuss why you think those words came up or those words were included. So, and so that was pretty cool. Uh, and I think there were more. Oh, no. I'm still about that. All of them. Great job. Thank you. So, um, will, you, will you share the link to that so I can put it in the, in the class so that people want to access uh, that on the exam? Yeah, how do I share it? Just uh, let's see. Yep, you're right on that icon there. And then we'll uh, create a link. Do I type something in? Or uh, just put in Clint or Ed class or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you copy, copy it or do I need to copy it for you? Uh, you need to, and then just email it to me, and I'll put it in. I'll email it to you. Okay. Yeah, yep. I can do that. Thanks. Mickey, I have a question. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about Word Splash? Yeah, so I used, um, it was actually a Google Doc or a Google Drive application that you can just add to your Google Drive, and it was called... I can't remember, I have to go back into this to see what it was called. But it was called, um, no, that's the wrong one. Okay. Would you recommend Cloud Generator? It's called Cloud Generator word? for Google Docs. Can't hear you. Would you, uh, Garrett, or what's the word I'm trying to say? Would you recommend for this for vocabulary words? I think um, for vocab, what it did is I put in a big, huge chunk of text, like a big, long paragraph, and then it pulled the words that were used the most often throughout that paragraph. So you probably could use it for vocab, but I, it's kind of cool to put in a whole bunch of text and say these are the main words, that, these are the key words that it's going to talk about. So I don't know. Vocab would probably work too. I'm sure there's, it would probably be interesting to also. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I need to probably go out of share my screen now, right? Yep. So hover your mouse up to the middle, upper middle of your screen and it'll pull the drop right down. Here. It's hidden. So just hover your mouse on the upper middle of the screen. A little tray will drop down and there'll be a stop sharing button. Top middle. Look up in the menu bar, just put your mouse up in the top menu. <laughs> you can't see it until you put your mouse up there. Oh, stop sharing. Okay. Okay. There you go. Thank you much. Any other questions for those? Okay. Well done. I appreciate that. That was good. Okay. Hit my presentation, which is also covered up by the window. Okay, so let's discuss a few things. Um, there were a few people that had problems sharing their Google Site link. Uh, I, most most of you guys got it shared correctly. Um, there's a difference between adding someone as an editor and then just making it public so that people can just go in and see your site. And that's kind of the, the whole purpose of a website is that it's it's public. So uh, I will jump out of my presentation and go to this untitled site. You all see that little portfolio says there in the middle. Yes, no. Making sure you guys can still see my screen. Yeah, we've got it, Clint. All right, thanks. Uh, how do I get back to my site? If you're if you're in, well, let me talk about publishing it first. You can always go back and they Google has changed how sites are working now. And so when you create a site in Google in Google Drive, 
is actually saved in Drive now. It used to be like you had to go to a separate uh, URL and, and go find it like that, but now all your sites are saved in Drive. Um, so I'd give my site a, a title here. I should do that one. And click out of that. Okay, so once you've got it created, instead of clicking add editors, which a couple of you did, come here to publish. You've got to give it a name and it'll pull in the name from the title that you gave it, or you can create something else. And then wherever your, it's all going to start with sites.google.com slash your school or district, like the end of your email address. And then whatever you have here is the name of your site. Uh, and so this URL here, once you hit publish, it says anyone on the web can see it. Once you hit publish, that's the address that you would turn in for the assignment or share uh, with that document for the portfolio peer review. Uh, so that's the, the uh, URL we want you guys to share. So you guys hit publish and did that correctly and then shared the big nasty Google URL from up here in the address bar, uh, which worked, but it's not a real friendly looking URL. So uh, publish your site, make sure that anyone on the web can see it. Uh, this one's up to you. What this means is, do you want Google to scan your site and so that people can search for it and find it through Google? And so if you want that, cool. If you don't want that, uh, don't check that box. And then once you hit publish, I'm gonna copy that thing. So I right click, copy that URL and then hit publish. And now when that site's live and published, anyone that has that shorter URL, I can just pop it in here with a little text box maybe. So this guy right here, that shorter URL, uh, that looks funny. There we go. We'll be able to get to my website. All right. So for that helps. Uh, there were maybe some issues with making sure a Google Doc is visible to everyone. Um, that's a that's a two-step process now. It used to only be just uh, a couple, uh, but every Google Doc, whether it's a slideshow or doc or sheet, has a big blue share button here on the upper right. Um, this is a review for a lot, a lot of you, but it's good to go over it with, with everyone sometimes. And so instead of popping in specific names or email addresses, this is helpful if you want to quickly be able to give someone editing rights to your site. If you want to just make it so that everyone can view it, no matter where they are, if they have the link, click on advanced. And then normally it says right here, it says private only you, private shared only with you. But if I click change here, there's an option here that says public. Anyone, anyone with the link can view. And then once you hit save, this again, it's a long, terrible URL, but at least that will let you uh, submit that in Canvas or put that in if that's how you're, if you're, if you're doing your digital portfolio with a Google slideshow, that's the link that you need to paste into uh, the assignment and on the uh, the uh, peer review feedback sheet. Okay, I'm gonna change that back to the only specific people. Okay, there we go. And save them there. Um, the way that you guys are seeing this in Canvas is I didn't make the, I didn't share it publicly, but what I've done is here under file, under uh, publish to the web. Here you can come in and make a link that's published that, that anyone can see to the, the slideshow, or I've used this embed code within Canvas. And it's really simple. Uh, if you wanna learn how to do that, you basically need to, wherever you're creating something in Canvas, uh, go to the HTML editor and just paste that code in, and your slideshow will be right there in Canvas. So, um, if you guys have questions on that, Brandon can help you with that. I can help you with that uh, afterwards. I just a quick walkthrough on how to how to publish those things. Question. Questions before we move on? Yep. Sorry, um, I created my site and I posted the link. But when I go back into Google, I can't access it. It's like I have no site of my own. So you go in through Drive to find them. Um, so it used to be you go to sites.google.com and you would go and find them there. Um, probably the best way to find it is from, from Drive. Click right here and say type is a 
Uh, just kidding. Fights won't carry that, are they? All right. I'll look for Reese, maybe, <laughs> and see if you can see this little icon here that has the uh, little purple icon. Let me zoom in on it. Mm -hmm. so that icon there, that's a sites icon. And so that'll that'll show you. This is a slides icon. This is a sites icon. And so go into your recents and look for anything with that. And if you can remember the name, type that in. But if not, but yeah, they're, they're all saved in Drive now. Uh, it used to be you have to go to sites.google.com. Okay, go to sites you. from a little waffle. Except now and I don't know how to turn off my mic. <laughs> my screen. Uh, right underneath your. Right underneath your little your cell picture. Phone. Right underneath your understand. picture is a microphone. Oh, I found it. <laughs> but if you do go this way, sites.google.com, there's a link here, new Google Sites. It will take you back and hopefully we show you all of your new sites that you've created. So, good question. Anyone else? Okay, uh, just to review on these summer presentations you guys have been doing a great job. We appreciate it. Don't stress about them. Keep them short. They don't have to be. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed with the work that you guys did today. Um, you may have overdone it and done a little too much. Uh, this course is, is designed to give you about four and a half hours worth of work a week. And so if you find yourself spending more time than that, um, please don't. don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want you to, you know, make this you know, we don't want you to hate this course because it's eating up so much of your life. We appreciate the effort and that you're putting in, but you know, keep them simple and short, and, and you'll be you'll be great. Um, hate the course, but don't hate us. That's right. <laughs> hate the game and not the player. Is that what they're saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and well, I'll address that here in a minute too. Uh, we still need people to cover a couple of elements. Uh, actually, while I was developing this slideshow today, somebody picked up element 20. Uh, so there's still two elements at the end that are not spoken for, 40 and 41. Uh, there are a couple of elements coming up that there's more than two people are signed up for. And so if you're in, in that boat, please uh, talk amongst yourselves and, and make sure we come, you uh, don't have three or four people on one element and we have at least one or two people on, on every element we have going on. Uh, appreciate you guys done a great job with, with signing up and getting that all that stuff covered uh, and again if you sign up and then later on can't make it something comes up uh we're we can reschedule if we need to or if you want to just do a quick recording or you know create something to share like we did today uh, good example of that today uh feel free to do that <coughs> sorry okay um we heard there are people having issues trying to share the link to their online portfolio uh, not being able to access that shared Google Doc. Um, I I made sure it's set so that anyone with the link can, can edit that, that page. Um, let me jump in and show you uh, the best way to get to those. Uh, that's not the right one. That is not the right one either. Let's see, let's go back. All right. I hate it when people fumble around like this. So, and I'm doing it myself. That's the one. Oh, there. There you go. The link to their portfolio. That's the one. So this this wasn't linked in the modules before, so I apologize about that. Uh, I've made it so that it's just an editable Google document right inside um you should be able to just click in here and start editing okay. right, right inside of the, of the page if that's not working for you click this link and that will open up that document in another window yeah, i only need two um, because i uh well I, i'm making meatballs and i uh, hold on let me mute her I need her from there. Oh, I can't. I just have to listen to doing a bite of all. Okay, share screen. Maybe she figured it out. 
Uh, so that link will open up the document in a new page. Um, let me know if you guys still have an issue trying to get that page to work for you, uh, to get the link to your online portfolio in there. Uh, don't worry, it's, you know, if that assignment's marked late as we get that, uh, that link in there so that people can start doing the peer review once we have stuff in there. And if there's still issues, I can turn it into a Canvas Wiki page, which is the same kind of page that you guys have been editing to uh, sign up for your, for your uh, weekly element presentations. So I can switch it over. I just thought a Google document would be easy, but if it's if it's giving us issues, we can change it up. So and it should work if it has some issues. Yeah, it should work. So if it's not working, try a few different links to get to it. Um, there's a couple ways to get to it. So let us know if you're still having problems. And worst off, just give us the link and ask us to add it to the page. We can do that too. Okay. Um, the tech project integration conferences. I have already had to reschedule one twice, uh, maybe three times. Uh, I know Brandon's met with some people in person, um, but the way our schedules are, uh, I'm adapting. We're adapting this course from a full-time SU professor. Uh, that's you know he had you know three classes to teach and that's all he did. So <laughs> we're not saying we don't want to have time to meet with you guys. It's just becoming kind of a struggle because Brad and I are all over the place on any given day. We should have done a better job of letting you know when we could meet. Uh, we're learning, you know, what we need to do and what we need to do better as well uh, with the class. So what we talked about today is that what we, and, you know, I think a lot of you guys have been doing these classes are comfortable with, with you know, this kind of stuff. So long story short, we're going to make the conferences optional. If you want to, meet with us and talk through it. We're more than happy to do that. Sure. Uh, schedule a time with us, send us a text message or something like that so that you know, we can set a concrete time to, to meet with you. Otherwise, if you've got those meetings, those meeting times listed on that page, I've kind of just made that, I've unlinked that page everywhere. Um, so uh, as of now, we don't have anyone scheduled for any conferences with us. Uh, but what we do, the, uh, the assignment is still there. The assignment for week uh, that's due week eight is now called Tech Integration Project Goals and Plans. And what we want you to do is just do a uh, whatever format you want to use. If you want to do, just type it up. That's cool. If you want to call us on the phone, that's or, um, if you want to do a you know a little slideshow or uh, if you want to do a screen screencast or whatever you want to do, uh, just create a document and submit it for that week eight assignment whenever you want. Uh, submit it early and if you let us know if you submit your plan, if you want us to look at it before you start or before it's due in week eight, uh, we'll be happy to, to, you know, take a look at what your plan is and provide any feedback that way. And then if, it, if we need a conference after that to talk through some things, we can set it up then. So that way it just kind of makes it more asynchronous and, you know, gives you some, some time and some flexibility, gives us some time and flexibility. Um, and hopefully this will still work. I, we, we do want to make sure that you feel like you're, you know, you're getting the full attention that you need. And we, I, we, I feel kind of bad that I haven't been able to, to you know, get face to face with everyone. But, but the big, the, the biggest thing is, is that we, the, the balloons, or the number for this class just kind of ballooned. It just quickly. kept going up. Yeah. And so if, you know, if we were going to have 20 people in each section, you know, that's kind of manageable, but we're, we're beyond that. <laughs> And uh, I mean, 20 would even be kind of hard for us to get done. So in order to accommodate more of you to help you guys get into these courses, we need to make some adjustments. And so hopefully that works for you guys. Again, we're not saying no to anybody. If you want to meet with us and talk it through, that's cool, but it's optional. Any questions on that? The, I had some teachers did submit me a, a Google Doc. They, if they just want to put that link just on, on that uh, tech integration goals and plans page also so that way it's there it's, it's it's listed in week two but the due date is week eight and it's also listed under week eight in the in the modules so yeah and if you want to just let us know i know i have some schedule to meet if you still want to meet let me know if you don't want to meet still let me know i'm i'm good either way with those few who we did set something up Anyone else? 
Atlantic, you can scratch me, Brandon. <laughs> scratch you, but I'm not even close now. All right. <laughs> I'll scratch you off. Okay. Let's not put any more work than we need to. Hey, like Kathy wants to meet too, right, Kathy? <laughs> All right. We're good. Any other questions on that one? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So what's up for the week? Quickly, are you reading is course, the course text, chapter two, communicating learning goals, tracking student progress and celebrating success. Um, kind of a short read. Uh, it does include the first three elements. Uh, Brandon has already uh, presented one of those. I was supposed to model one for you all last week. And so I will do that right now. Element one is to provide clear learning goals and scales or rubrics. Uh, basically the bullet points there, uh, and, you know, we take the easy ones. This one's pretty, pretty obvious. And I know a lot of you guys are already doing this. Uh, I know everyone's putting, you know, the, the, uh, their goal for the day or the, um, you know, important thing that they're covering, you clearly communicate those goals, uh, put it up on a class website, post it on your interactive whiteboard, you know, make sure it stands out with some, you know, make the font bigger or make sure it's nice bright orange red so that it, it stands out uh, even share that on your uh, class hashtag on social media if you're doing stuff like that so the students know what your goals are for the day and for the week and for the unit uh, ensure that students understand those goals so you could have students uh, paraphrase them back to you uh, at random using like a random number generator uh, there's apps out there that will randomly pick student numbers uh, or like your you know maybe virtual popsicle sticks there's also tools with the interactive whiteboards if you dig in there. Uh, I love the dice. There are some interactive dice there that will pick numbers randomly. You can say, you know, row three, seat four. You know, tell me, you know, in your words, what what is our goal for this for this unit? Uh, or again, using those interactive polling tools, uh, Padlet, Socrative, Poll Everywhere. Uh, the question that was asked earlier, how do you do that without buying clickers? Those are three tools there that. Uh, allow students to use their devices or Chromebooks or whatever to uh, to provide online feedback, interactive feedback. And then again, establish and use rubrics. I love rubrics, especially with project-based learning and uh, with technology, when kids are creating things, it's so important to uh, share those rubrics out with students, uh, show them examples of targets, uh, you know, talk through with them, make sure they understand them, uh, make sure that they they even have them share what they think each proficiency level in a rubric would look like. Um, so that's that little element there. Um, the other two uh, you can read through in the rest of the chapter for the week. Uh, the discussion is uh, discussing the difference between uh, unassisted and enhanced dis discovery learning. You know, unassisted is pretty much just letting students like maybe I mean, I, I don't want to badmouth Montessori schools, but just kind of saying, hey, whatever you want to learn, you just go ahead and do it. Uh, there's been research to show that that's not quite the most effective uh, way for students to, uh, to gain and create their own knowledge and retain that over time. Uh, but there are some huge advantages to enhance this discovery learning. And so there are a couple of articles linked. They're short uh, in the discussion there and just discuss through you know, how you use discovery learning in your class if you do. If not, are there some techniques there that uh, that you could try and how would you try those in your classroom uh, or discuss what you do in the classroom? Uh, the first assignment this week, and I promise we'll stop having multiple assignments each week. Uh, this assignment A is a digital citizenship presentation. I should have put presentation in quotes. Uh, just create something brief, something that would be of use for you in your classroom on one aspect of digital citizenship, you know, like maybe it's on personal information, you know, when to share that or who to be friends with online or be kind online, or just take one piece of that digital citizenship umbrella and create uh, or find and modify uh, something that you can use in your classroom for that. Um, maybe focus on one that's an issue in your classroom or your school. Hopefully you don't have any issues, but if you do, maybe you pick one that, um, that is and create something based on that. And then once you do, uh, share the product with your class or with colleagues that aren't in this class, and then write a brief reflection paragraph or two on how it went with the students, if they got it, if they liked it, 
uh, or if you shared it with a colleague, what feedback they gave you. Just write a little reflection paragraph on that and submit both uh, the link to your pro your presentation, poster project, whatever, and then your uh, your reflection there. And then uh, the second assignment is a digital aids classroom management poster. Uh, just like you to find a tool out there. Um, hopefully it's a new tool to you. Uh, this class is kind of designed to kind of give you opportunities to try out new things. So if there's you know something that somebody else used that you haven't tried yet, we encourage you to, to you know take a few minutes and dig into something new so you can uh, you know make your tool belt more diverse, right? Your, your technology tool belt, uh, put more tools in your tool belt there. Uh, but create a poster that will visually remind and represent key procedures and routines with technology in your classroom. And then again, just like the digital citizenship presentation, share it with your class or share it with your with colleague and then uh, write a little reflection paragraph on any needed changes. Um, some tools that you could do this with. Uh, I Just off the top of my head, I listed uh, Canva, Adobe Spark, and then Google Slides or Drawings. If you haven't ever played Google Drawings, uh, you can find that under in Drive. You go to New and choose one of the drop downs, say More, and Google Drawings is an option there. There are tons of shapes and you know stickers and stuff like that that you can put in texts and you know, connect your dots and whatever. You can make your own cool little digital drawings. Um, any other suggestions and things that that come to your mind when you uh, think about what this assignment B is is asking you to do? Okay, then if not, let us know if you need suggestions on uh, things to use for that. Um, anything else? That's kind of the overview of the week and uh, any other questions, comments, concerns of what has happened or what needs to happen for the coming week? We just appreciate what everybody's doing. Keep, keep up what you're doing getting your discussions in and, and your assignments. So thank you. And it looks good from the little live that I've seen. I'll get great yeah, and, tomorrow some more. Again, yeah, <laughs> I haven't dug in a much. I saw that there were 200 submissions for the for the week one discussion. <laughs> again, if that becomes too much, you know, hone in on, on you know, a Grab few different hand. conversations and don't don't stress if you can't keep up with everything that's going on. I kind of thought when we'd split everything up into sections that the discussions would be in separate sections, but that doesn't look like it's the case. Um, I think everyone's discussing with everyone, so that's a good thing and a bad thing, but just, again, if you're spending too much time in the class, cut back on, on uh, we just, we want you to be successful and, and do good work, but don't kill yourself. So. Please. Anything else? Okay, if not, have a spectacular week and weekend. Uh, go Eagles. I will turn on my camera quickly. So even though that's coming up in a week, go Eagles <laughs> for the NFL championship. I like it, Quinn. It looks good. <laughs> Thanks. Anything, anything else? Anyone? Comments or anything? Okay, we're going to try to keep it shorter than 50 minutes from now on, we promise. But uh, yeah. On your presentations, short and sweet, and we'll try to keep everything else six eight so we're not spending a bunch of time. All right, happy trails, everybody. I just waved, even though my camera's Thank off. Thank you. But, uh, I'm waving now. There, there I am. Ran it away for me. So thanks. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Nikki. Thank you. Yeah. Brandon, anything we need to discuss? I don't think so. You got to just okay. dig in now to it. Right. Brandon, Brandon, sorry. Yes. Brandon, this is Kathy. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, Kathy. We hear you, Kathy. Go ahead. Brandon, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. I can't. Are hear your speakers you. muted? No, I can't see you. <laughs> I have a question on the um, 
You just can't hear me now, Kathy. We can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead, ask a question. I'll email her. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Get someone better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Working on it. We start talking.